Hey guys, it's Brant and I'm back with another The Panel Has Spoken video. And today I'm going to be tackling Kiss's Asylum album. And I've got my good buddy Rick from It's All For You Demon here. Mr. Rick, how you been doing? Good, how are you? I've been doing well. I'm really enjoying the video series that you've had going on with going back and scouting those locations in, the, mm. in New York when you got to go for the, when you went to see the End of the Road Tour and in uh, Madison Square Garden. It's yeah, really it good. Fun. It's really good. Yeah. I know it's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a lot of work, but um, I really appreciate you putting out things like that. And you do it in a way where I feel like I'm there with you. And mm. uh, hopefully someday uh, we'll get the KISS crew together and oh, we, yeah. can, we can meet somewhere and we can wax some nostalgia and talk about our favorite band or, uh, or our band that we love so much. And... Uh, and that'd be really cool, really cool to do. We yeah, have like four vlogs going at once. That'd be awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be really cool. Yeah, we make a series out of it across multiple channels. That'd be awesome. Um, so we're going to tackle uh, Kiss's Asylum today. And first thing we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about our impressions of the album. And then we'll get into the panel members and get into the songs themselves. Um, I'll start. I remember getting this album when it came out. I was hanging out a lot at my cousin Vonda's house, who has now passed on. Um, but she was not a big, she wasn't a big Kiss fan. She was older than me. Um, she wasn't a big Kiss fan, but she loved this album. And her favorite song on off this album was Tears Are Falling. Uh, but she is also a fan of Uh All Night. And um, I remember going to her house and playing this album on her stereo. And um, I remember, like I said, she was older than me. So she had, she and her husband had a really nice stereo. It was the nicest stereo I remember anybody having at the time. And freaking King of the Mountain, those blistering drums at the beginning of it. When you're in a house with a stereo that has enough amplification and enough speakers to literally rattle the floor when Eric starts in with that double bass. It was awesome. It was almost like being at a concert. Um, and so that's one of my memories of this album. Um, and a lot of people hate this cover. Uh, a lot of people mentioned, a lot of panel mem members mentioned being turned off by the cover, thinking the cover was quote-unquote silly, comical. Um, but honestly, if we put ourselves back in the bubble, the mid-80s bubble, this kind of graphic art was the sign of the times. There was a lot of this going on, uh, not only on Kiss albums, but on other albums and in advertising in general. One thing that I do like about it is, once again, Kiss, they're just, and Rick, you can jump in anytime you want, but it's, it's Kiss being unique. They always, I like when they always change the color scheme on the logo. They mm -hmm. always change like the font for the name of the album. And um, I like the fact that they almost duplicated the Dynasty cover without the makeup. Uh, it, each person in their respective places and with the colored lips that kind of represents their color. Uh, I remember at the time a lot of people... We look back on Eric and Eric and uh, Bruce fondly now, but you have to remember when this album came out, Eric was still kind of the new guy, and Bruce was the new guy, mm -hmm. and so it was almost kind of the slapback that we get now with, that we give now and sometimes here now with uh, Tommy and Eric wearing the makeup. Well, these guys was wearing the colors, and uh, it, the wound was still a little fresh. Uh, with Eric or with uh, Peter getting fired from the band and Ace leaving the band. The wound was still a little fresh for some of us KISS members who remember the original four, who were fans during the time of the original four. And this was a bold move <laughs> to put those colors on the guys. And of course, um, this now when I see this, it reminds me of the 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 piece that the, the one of your viewers made for you for mm. Asylum. It reminds me of that. Um, and then the back of the cover is just a like a stencil of them, which people were a little more 
not a fan of. And then the album cover is just the boring Mercury um, black and white. But I like I did appreciate having the additional actual photos of the band and not like lithograph prints of the band. The additional photos. And of course the costumes in this time were just freaking outrageous. But Kiss was basically doing what everybody else was doing. Yeah. With the colors and everything. Um, and do you have any... The only other thing I have to say is my memories of this album was I saw this album. I won uh, on a radio contest. I called in and I won the entire catalog of Kiss albums up to this point. And it was the it was the um, the uh, polygram re-releases, which oh, are very, wow. which are very valuable now, which was stolen <clears throat> when my collection was stolen. Cause, so at this point in time, I actually had two of everything mm. because I had all the stuff that I'd originally collected up to this point, and then I had all the Polygram re-releases that I won from KISS or debut all the way up. And uh, I also won backstage passes. or Well, I won. I didn't, wear back, I didn't win backstage passes. I wore press passes. But little mm. did I realize that a backstage pass and a press pass are essentially the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so... We were allowed to go in. I had a ride. I was only 16 at the time. I didn't have my license. Didn't even have my learner's permit. And um, and a guy that I worked with, a guy that my mom worked with, rather, took me to the show. His name was Terry. And we went down there, found out when we got down there that since I had the press pass, had two of them, we didn't have to wait in line with the general public. We were ushered into the press gate. They told us to go to the press gate which was around the back on the side of the Charlotte Coliseum. Um, and I still haven't released that video yet. I need to release that video. Uh, it was the same Coliseum that I saw Kiss in for Dynasty mm. and for uh, Creatures and for Animalize. And so I, Asylum was the last time I would see them in concert in for a while. And in that Coliseum, because they changed it up. They built, Charlotte built a new Coliseum, and they changed that one over to Arena, where they basically just did hockey and things like that. Mm. So um, we, we got to go in the press pass, and Crocus was the band that opened, and we missed getting to see Crocus because we were, which I wasn't really interested, I never was a Crocus fan. Um, and, but we were trying to go backstage and meet Kiss. We were back there with other press members, and we would have got to talk to them. It would have been almost like a press type thing. And Kiss ended up coming out. They ended up not coming out. They're like, "You're gonna have to come back after." So <clears throat> we got to go since we had press passes, and my friend Terry had a nice 35 millimeter camera. So we were in between the barrier and the stage. And we took pictures all night long. Um, got had really good shots of Gene, really good shots of everybody up close, and uh, lost those negatives and lost those pictures whenever my collection got stolen. And um, so afterwards, I was like, "Okay, cool, the show's over." And I remember I loved the I loved the animal I, I mean, I loved the asylum stage, the stacked speakers with the white. Kate, the white um, cases and the big black speakers and then the huge KISS logo that was mm -hmm. literally from floor to ceiling biggest KISS logo ever um, a physical logo and um, so after the show and it was a great show and good set list uh, I looked the set list up the other day and I was like wow you know I don't remember these, sh these songs in particular but that you know that would have been a good show and so afterwards, it was time to go meet Kiss for the after thing. And uh, my friend Terry worked with my mom, had to be at work at like 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning. They worked in manufacturing. And I was like, okay, now it's time to go meet Kiss. And he's like, I got to go. I got to, you know, I, we, got, we still have to drive an hour home. And I got to get to bed because I got to work tomorrow. And I'm like, really? Really? So since he was my ride, um, mm -hmm. I didn't get to meet Kiss. With my press passes, so. But anyway, so what about you with Asylum? How old were you? And uh, all the, all, I want all the gory details. <laughs> so this this would have been I would have been like in the mix at this time. Um, 
I was not still a diehard fan, but I, my friend Danny, I started, I knew I've known Danny my whole life, but really started hanging out with him. 85, uh, rode BMX bikes, skateboarded. And when you skateboard, you're supposed to listen to punk. Well, Danny was like the rock and roll skateboarder. So it was Kiss, Van Halen, Metallica. And he would play Asylum all the time. He had a 1980 Camaro, really cool car. And he would play Asylum all the time. And a few years later, after 85, when I became a fan, he gave me this tape. And uh, I love this tape. Um, to me, it's the, it's the, you and I spoke earlier, and I, I know you're going to bring this up later, but uh, it's the sister album to Crazy Nights for me. Um, you always kind of pick two albums like Rock and Roll Over versus Love Gun or, or uh, Lick It Up versus Creatures. Well, for me, it's Asylum versus Crazy Nights. And uh, I love this record. Probably my favorite Bruce record. And once I saw Who Wants to Be Lonely on Exposed, that I was, I was sold. I, I, I loved this era, and I love this record. Uh, yeah, we did talk about that earlier. And it's weird how, um, how you can look at things differently and what brought that up was I was saying to you that we were we were talking about the personnel on the album that this basically has the same personnel as Animalize did. And even before I knew that, I've always kind of bookended uh, Animalize and Asylum together to me. Uh, mm-hmm. They they've always been kind of sister albums to me. They're very very unique to each other, and. Um, and like we were talking about that uh, we talked about also earlier off camera that the two additional musicians, this is basically Paul, Gene, Eric, and Bruce, except for two additional musicians. Uh, John John Bonavar, uh, or Borovar, I hate it, I mispronounce pe- people's names all the time, but I just do, that's just me. Uh, but he basically played... Uh, bass guitar and background vocals on Who Wants to Be Lonely and Uh All Night probably because Gene didn't want to do it or was too busy this is still Gene's in the middle of that being a rock star being a producer mm-hmm. discovering bands black and blue and all this other stuff and then there's Alan Schwarzenberg who is providing additional drum uh, overdubs as the official title and I just kind of, whenever I see that, it always kind of makes me wonder because we know Eric Carr was the drummer that he was. We've all seen him play live. We've all seen him play in either live or listen to him on an album. And he's a phenomenal drummer. But I always just kind of wonder whenever I see that, whenever I saw it on Animal Eyes and see it on Asylum, it always makes me wonder with Paul basically being the executive producer of these, or being the actual producer of these albums, and Gene just being producer as a figurehead, uh, what was it about Eric's drumming on some of these songs that wasn't up to par? Mm-hmm. Um, was you know what exactly did Alan do? I'd be curious to know. Did he do fills, or did he play pieces that Eric might not have gotten exactly right, or didn't do exactly the way Paul wanted them done? Uh, you know, because when you read Paul's book, Eric had a lot of self, according to Paul, Eric had a lot of self-conscious issues. And so you don't know, but it's just every time I see that, it just always makes me curious hmm. uh, about just what what was it. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always kind of thought maybe it would have been maybe Phil's or something like we talked about in the Animalize video that. I've seen drummers that they can drum all day long, but they suck at fills. And I'm not saying Eric sucked at anything because I don't mm. think that he did. But by Paul's standards, you know, who knows? Because mm-hmm. um, b- making an album is like making a, a cake or cooking a dish. You have all these ingredients that you put together and then you bake it. And, mm-hmm. and you have a, a song and then collectively an album that comes out of it. So who really knows? Uh, so anyway, anything else you want to get into before we get into the panel? No, uh, this was, <laughs> this was my first ever piece of like kiss merch I ever made on my own. 
I uh, took one of those plastic keychains and cracked it in half and cut out the logo from the cassette tape and taped it inside a uh, keychain. <laughs> that was my, my freshman year arts and crafts. <laughs> Fun. I've got a few more stories, but they're kind of more related to songs. And so I'll talk to them about it. I'll talk about those when we get to the songs. Uh, but for now, we're going to talk about the panel. We're going to name the panel. Uh, Rick, it'd be a good opportunity for you to get a glass of water or whatever, yeah. a coffee. I'm drinking coffee because this is uh, still early. Um, but there are 101 panel members, including me and Rick. Uh, 101 panel members on this one. We also have a very special panel member on this one as well. If you have not seen on Twitter, we actually, uh, I tagged, uh, whenever I started posting about this, I tagged Bruce Killick on it. I tagged Carrie Stevens on it. And I tagged the official Eric Carr Twitter account, which I think may be run by his sister or mm -hmm. somebody in his family. And I even made a quick video about it, a minute long, saying it'd be cool if we get these people involved. Well, Mr. Bruce Killick was kind enough to take time out of his schedule and go on Twitter and put in his picks. So, awesome. so he's kind of an honorary member uh, of the uh, panel on this one. And so as we go through the video, I'll be talking about what, where Bruce picked songs uh, in case you didn't get to see his uh, Twitter uh post about it so so on the panel it's me uh rick and mr bruce Kulick, and then from the social media we have from facebook my friend scotty sky mac uchi matthew wasson mark hilliard vincio enrique destroyer dave from instagram dylan tucker j spence metal aj zetro 1975 also known as Anthony, uh, the Clarences, Jake Jackson, Sweet Dan, nineteen seventy, Tony P one, Skate Devil seventy four, Justin Churchy Hanson the third, then from Twitter, Where's Drago, Aladio, Sam Loomis, Tom Dust, Kimchi Chris, Bill Sharp, Mark Weir, Sean McClelland, Paul Teplius, Steve, R C Campbell, Bree Strutter. David King, Vincent Marone Arthur, Darren Helliwell, Jack Skellington, Tony Rod, Julian Gill, Mr. Julian Gill, Deuce Kissman, Katie Christina, Kim Anders, Mike in Fresno, Jeff Wyatt, Richie Rich, Matthew Smith, Julian Davies, Jen Semenzu, Ace Van Deuce, Juan Miguel Burgos, Charlie Shepard, Walter Bianco, Andrew Gattensby, R4 Podcast, Kyle Schneider, Russell Kanhai, Jeremy Elliott, Jeff Radigari. <laughs> Come on, guys. I mean, I'm sorry if I'm butchering y'all's names. I really am. Eric Mosio, Rick Taylor, John Davis, Donald Rickert, New York Groove. Then from YouTube, Lee Gersman, Specs, Emily Graziano, Mikhail D., Snake Hips 3131, Ashley Dalton, Paul Bertolino, That Toy Bonnie Guy, Louis Maladano, John O, Indy Colt 777, Pins Fan 77, Les Wadley, Wam SB, J. Reed, Rocker L0270, Kiss Carolina Hard Rock Metalhead, Trevor Bullock, Joe Pegg, Demetrius K, Ed Guy GZ, Kissin' Time, Stephen Goodman, Two Gay Dads, Dark Light, Tom S, Gregory Pegg, J. Lee, John Howard, Rick R., Sublime 130, Travis Mulgard, Jeremy Carmona, 3SV 1333, Robbie Stars, Dave Zwan, Jesse Ray, Perpetual Art, Future Squash 767, and Super Kiss 1200. So that is our panel, 101 members strong for this episode. It's awesome. So I've had people ask me, I want to address this now, I've had people ask me, how do I get in on the panel? A lot of the newcomers. Um, the way you get in on the panel is if you're watching this video, uh, if you're watching it for the very first time that it's come out and you want to be in a panel, we probably still have one going on and all you have to do is go to my social media, go to either Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube, and you'll see a thing and it'll say 
something about it's time for the panel. Get your lists in and I'll, there'll be an album there. And whatever that album is, look at the post and find if there's, find the due date because there's always going to be a due date. And so if it's past that due date, you've missed that one. So, but if you look, there should always be one going on. When we get done with KISS, we're going to do some 80s albums. I've had somebody ask me if we will do panels for the post-KISS solo albums like Peter Chris, Ace Frehley. Sure, why not? I mean, I don't see why. As long as there's interest for us to do a panel on something, we'll do it. I mean, me and Rick, we're not opposed to it. As long as we have enough people getting involved in it, we'll give it a shot. So, um... Let's go ahead and get into the actual oh. music itself. So we're going to start with, there's 10 tracks. And uh, I want to go ahead and say really quick that um, the top five for me almost could um, all be pretty much the same. And there's only a couple songs on here that I really... I don't not like any song on this album. There's just a couple that are kind of just meh. You know, they're okay. I listen to them. I rarely skip on this album uh, because this is one of my favorite non-makeup albums. Um, but uh, I don't skip too often, but there's a couple that's meh, you know. Mm -hmm. What about you on that? Well, we'll, we'll get to one that uh, I'll have to apologize for, so... <laughs> All right, so we're going to, you know, you guys know how we do it. If you're ready to play along, get your pens and pencils out, and here we go. So we're going to start with track number 10. Uh, what is your prediction for track number 10? Love's a deadly weapon. Love's a deadly weapon, okay. My prediction for track number 10 is secretly cruel. Uh, and... Uh, I'm going to be reading Bruce picks, but he didn't do a predictions because, you know, he didn't, he didn't know to do that. So coming in at number 10 with 360 points is Love's a Deadly Weapon. So Rick, you score one. Um, three panelists, Lee Gersman, John O., John Howard, picked this as their favorite song. I picked Love's a Deadly Weapon as my second favorite song. Mm. Um, I love Love's a Deadly Weapon. I, I, a lot of people, the reason why they hate this song is the reason why I love this song. It's so frantic. It's got that that frantic riff. It's the upbeat Gene song. Like a, It's like a, the I'm Alive version, Gene's version of I'm Alive. Uh, but I just love, Gene has some really good screams in this. Bruce's solos and Bruce's guitar work is blistering in this uh, song. Eric drums that that he's doing like a double hop, like do 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 on the bass drum. That is actually where you do that when you're doing that to do to tet to do to tet to do to tet on the drums, and you're doing it at that speed, and then doing the where they go into that part where just before the chorus they're going da 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 and he he jumps into the double bass. This is a very challenging song to play drum wise, but it's one mm. that I love, and it's got a couple of those shotgun rolls that da 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 da. -da. But uh, I love the lyric "Love's a deadly weapon and murder's on my mind." I love that. That's an mm. awesome, awesome lyric. So um, yeah, man, second favorite song for me out of the wow. bat. Out of the bat, um, I hate this song scored so low. I didn't expect this song to score this low, according to my predictions we'll hear later. But, yeah, so um, Love's a Deadly Weapon, second for me. What about you? I scored it at eight, and it's not a put-down that it's low. There's just other tracks I like more. Um, like you said, I love the riff. Um, any song that has a gene, ooh, is so good. Mm -hmm. And uh, musically, this is the kind of song I wish would have been on Revenge. Like revenge needed a mm -hmm. heavy, fast song like this, and but I do love it. It's fun, Gene. It's fast, Gene. It's a, uh, it's that perfect '80s Gene. Mm -hmm. When he when he tapped into this kind of song, it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. 
All right. <clears throat> and Bruce Kulick picked Love's a Deadly Weapon as his least favorite song on the album. Oh, wow. I know that really surprised me. But I mean, you know, he probably loves them all. But uh, he didn't go into detail. But it's, it's weird. It's weird to think he probably has memories of these songs too. Mm-hmm. That you know, like just vibes in the studio. Maybe mm-hmm. you know, didn't feel right. You know, not a good day or whatever. That's yeah. kind of neat to think about. Could have been a bitch to record, and he might have uh-huh. had to do something over and over and over and over. Yeah, <laughs> could be. Um, and uh, maybe one day we. It'd be, I think it'd be really cool one day to have Bruce actually in a video talking about oh, yeah. why he picked things the way he picked them from the insider camp versus personal experience of the song, like whether he actually likes the song or not, and combined with whether it was a bitch to record or he never felt the vibe, like you said. It'd be really cool. So, Bruce, if you're he, watching. <laughs> he, uh, he should do a response video to his Twitter with explanations why he ranked where he did. That'd be cool. That'd be real cool if he did that. Bruce, there's an idea for you. Um, Yeah, do that on your Twitter. That'd be awesome. Um, So that brings us up to number nine. So what's your prediction for number nine? I'm alive. Okay. Trial by Fire for me, number nine. Uh, Stuck a couple Gene songs at the bottom. (laughs) Uh, So that's my prediction is Trial by Fire. Um. A number nine with 374 points. The panel chose I'm Alive. So that's two for you. Um, Future Squash 767 picked this as their favorite. The only person to pick, pick this as their favorite. Uh, I picked um, I'm Alive as my eighth. Basically for the same reason you picked uh, Love's a Deadly Weapon as your eighth. It's not a bad song. Um, and it has, like I said, I compared it to Love's a Deadly Weapon. Love's a Deadly Weapon and I'm Alive basically are sister songs on this album. They have that mm. same vibe, that same frantic to it. It's just Gene doing it his way, Paul doing it his way. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it has that same that same drum beat to it, that to do to do to do to do to do to do and that when he's not doing the double bass, it has that same feel to it. But yeah, I'm alive. It's it's the same for me as it is like Love's Deadly Weapon was for you. It's a good song. It's that type of song that Paul would continue to do. Uh, that's that 80s upbeat, frantic song. Um, but it just it falls to, towards the bottom for me. But I don't skip it. It's not the worst. Mm. This is the song I have to apologize for. I picked I'm Alive at 10. Um, this is, I've maybe heard this song a handful of times. This, I always skip this song and I don't know why I listen to it for ranking this album, but, uh, I just always skip it every time from being 15 to 45. I just always skip this song and I don't know why, but yeah, it's number 10 for me for that. And I apologize. (laughs) That's my apology song on this this panel. <laughs> hey, no need to apologize. If you don't like it, you don't like it. I mean, you know, it's 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 that's how it is. All right, so that brings us up to number eight. So prediction for number eight. Trial by fire. Trial by fire for you. Um, my number eight prediction is I'm alive. So number eight with a score of four hundred and forty two points panel has chosen Radar for Love. Yeah, I was surprised to see Radar for Love down this low. Um, Four panelists, Dark Light, Trevor Bullock, Kyle Schneider, and Sweet Dan 1970 picked this as their favorite. Uh, I picked Radar for Love as my seventh, and that it does that sounds bad because it's out of the top five, but I still love Raider for Love. Um, very, it's one of those I love whenever Kiss does a Zeppelin song, and, and they continued the trend uh, on this album as well. Uh, some people they they were putting 
they put one a couple panel members put Radar for Love, aka Black Dog. <laughs> so, um, and I think it has to do with that whole that whole note while Paul's jamming in his lyric, and then Eric comes back in on the ta da 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 da. It has that has that feel to it, mm-hmm. and it has that swagger to it. Um, but I love Radar for Love. I love. I like the words to it. I love the feel of it. I think it's awesome. But I like everything about Radar for Love. It's just it had to be picked somewhere. And I like, mm-hmm. you know, six other songs better. So it's seven for me. What about for you? <clears throat> Number three for me. Uh, just basically everything you said. It's Zeppelin. It's got Paul Swagger and just a delicious riff. And this is a great. 80s song to introduce someone to 80s kiss and play a rock and roll song Mm -hmm. you know not play a a hooky you know radio friendly song play like a rock and roll b-side play them this and that's a it's a great i just always love this riff it's just so it's so cocky i love it um, and I didn't mention it earlier, uh, mention Bruce picked, but Bruce's pick, what he picked at his number nine favorite track uh, was I'm Alive, which is what the panel picked. And once again, you have to wonder, we, we need a, we need a, a, a response video. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, what he picked at number eight uh, is um, Secretly Cruel was his number eight pick which i think is interesting that you have those two songs paul songs at the bottom and and then a gene song down there too um so that's what that's what he picked on the eighth and ninth sorry i missed it (laughs) sorry i missed it on the ninth um so number seven for the panel what do you think secretly cruel so you're secretly cruel, all right? I was thinking Love's a Deadly Weapon. I was thinking that Love's a Deadly Weapon was going to fall low, but I didn't think it was going to fall as low as it did and dead last. Um, I was least hopeful. Um, so at number... Um, so I picked Love's a... Uh, um, so, I, so I predicted Love's a Deadly Weapon at seven. At 468 points panel picked any way you slice it as their seventh pick five panelists rocker l 0270 aj zetro 1975 jay spence metal scotty sky picked this as their favorite track and i will join them and pick this as my favorite track and probably one of my top five favorite Gene songs. I love Any Way You Slice It. Um, Any Way You Slice It is the Fits Like a Glove counterpart to, to this album. But I love uh, I love Any Way You Slice It. I love it from the very, that kink, 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 at the very beginning. And uh, the funny story I have about this song is... Um, a memory I have about it is this album. I was 16 when this album came out and I did a video talking about a row of stores that was in front of my house, uh, like a little strip of stores that was in front of my house. And it was a, a barbershop, an arcade and a, and a, and a, uh, and a, um, a washing, a washerette in it. And, um, in the middle, the arcade at one point in time closed and and the arcade before it was an arcade it was an old general store it had those wood floors and everything well when it closed down as an arcade there was a print shop that took over it and leased it and they printed things uh magnets signs decals things like that and this is the time that the really huge big satellites came out the the satellite systems where you could start getting satellite TV. And this guy, one time, I remember we were out. This was when I was, my curfew, when I was 16, my curfew got extended a little bit. And plus this place was literally 100 yards in front of my house. 
And so I remember I had this, not only did I have it on album, but I had it on cassette. And I had my little boom box, the one that you see in all the 80s movies, the big silver speakers with the little thing going across the middle of them, the little graphic equalizers and things jump, mm-hmm. jumping. And I took my boom box with me wherever we went because we had to have Kiss. As long as I had D batteries and had it, you know, yeah. uh, <laughs> took like Four eight, D batteries, yeah. yeah, took like eighteen D batteries or whatever. But um, and I remember I was up there and the guy was painting. Uh, it was like eleven o'clock at night, and the guy was there working after hours and he was painting this uh, satellite dish. He had it sat up outside the store, and he had a ladder and a scaffolding, and he was painting a. Um, Tar Heels Ram, uh, Carolina Tar Heels Ram mascot in the middle of it, and we were me and my friend. We were me and my friends. We were standing there watching him and everything. And I was I'd played King of the Mountain. I'd started this album, and King of the Mountain had played and everything. And I don't remember him reacting any way about that song, but I remember any way you slice it came on. And he was up on this scaffolding, and he was an older guy. He was probably younger than me now. Mm -hmm. But he seemed old to me because I was 16. Mm -hmm. And he's up there and he had his paint can in his hand. And it started that, and the drum cut, and he started, he was up there kind of just, kind of just dancing, kind of just moving his feet back and forward while he was painting. And then it got in there, you know, and this has a great lyric too. The opening lyric, I caught the tail of a hurricane. That's awesome. I mean, that is Paul Stanley level lyrics. You know, uh-huh. um, and there's just so many great lyrics in this song, but it got to that part where it's like, anyway, you I said, and then the return and, you know, when it, whenever the, they start singing back to him and when it says you're hot under the collar, ain't your mother's little daughter anymore. He was like, I remember he looked down at me. He's like, you're going to have to turn that song off. That song makes me want to, that song makes me feel like fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that to this day, to the, those words coming out of his mouth to this day. He's like, damn, son, you're going to turn that song off. Makes me want to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, any way you slice it, you know you can't deny it. You're hot under the collar. Ain't your mother's little daughter anymore. So I love any way you slice it. So what about you? I uh, I chose it at seven, and it's not a, again, it's not a, reflection of what i think about the song um i i totally agree with you this is lick it up gene um this is also that opening single note as fast as it is is how i thought lick it up should be to me the song lick it up is too slow Mm -hmm. it it, i mean i just love that it gets you in a good mood and how fun is the mother's little daughter, daughter. Whoop, whoop. Oh, man. You talk about a good time ending to a song. Mm-hmm. Right there. Boom. Yeah, I love that. I love I love the little blues lick on the end. Bruce, mm-hmm. and that's just awesome. Um, and as far as where Bruce picked Any Way You Slice It, uh, Bruce picked uh, Any Way You Slice It at number seven for him. Mm. So um, it's good to see that he picked it kind of along where the panel did. And uh, I, like I said, man, I just like to know some of the, the insights to some of these, some of these stories and everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know that Gene had checked out on this album, but even on the albums that Gene checked out on, it seems like he had one or two songs that he put his best effort into. And then the other ones he might've not put so much yeah. effort into. But he always had one or two that he really, really, really put an effort on. Um, so, yeah. So that brings us up to number six. I said um, panel uh, all night. All right. And my prediction for number six uh, would have been any way, was any way you slice it. So I thought, I knew it was going to not be, be in the top. But I hope it wasn't going to be in the bottom. And this one, whenever I first started seeing some of the voting come through, I was really scared because I saw this was what we were talking about 
uh, uh, the other night when we were recording uh, something for you, we were talking about how this these albums are do these '80s albums are doing exactly what we thought they were going to do. Is you see somebody that picks a song at number one, and then the next person down they pick it at number ten. Mm-hmm. You have so many polarizing views on the songs on these albums. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was one of them. I, every time I saw somebody, when I started scoring it, when I saw somebody pick it as one, I was like, yeah. But then most of the time it was, you know, their eighth, ninth, tenth pick, somewhere around there. Um, so, but for number six, the panel chose with 482 points. Trial by Fire. Mm. Four panelists. Super Kiss 1200, Travis Mulgard, Russell Kanhai, the Clarences, picked this as their um, number six. I picked this as uh, my ninth. Um, and I also predicted this very low. I had a hard time separating on... The songs I didn't like, I had a hard time separating myself from my prediction. And so I found that songs that that's at the bottom of my list I have, are really close to the bottom of my prediction list. Trial by Fire is one of those songs that I just felt like Gene phoned in. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, it's, it's almost the same riff all the way through it. There's a couple little chord changes at the kind of bridge, kind of pre-chorus, bridge pre-chorus kind of thing. But it's just one of those songs that's the the chorus to me is boring and it just kind of just drudges on, you know. It's not drudging, it just kind of marches at a very monotonous pace to me. Mm-hmm. And I don't skip it, but it gets damn sure tempting sometimes. Yeah. So um but yeah, I picked this for nine for me. Trial by fire is nine for me. Trial by fire, I chose I, I totally agree with you. Um it's a very Gene Demo-ish feel song. like Almost like he just needed a, an extra track for this record. I do love it. Um, my first Kiss magazine featured the um, Gene, my very first Gene, like, Life is Good interview. And uh, this song reminds me of that interview. Um, this song, I remember printing out the lyrics to this song because they're kind of, you know, Gene uplifting. Mm-hmm. You can do anything in life lyrics. And I remember printing them out and putting them on my wall when I was in high school. And to me, that's just always kind of fun, those kind of memories. So I ranked it at five for me, but I do feel like you do. It's kind of a uh, demo ish, you know, kind of just a slide this one in. Here's my here's my song. Mm-hmm. Okay. Trial by Fire. Bruce picked um, Trial by Fire at um, number six. And it's oh. funny because he's almost lined up with the panel on almost every song. Um, I think he's only actually been off on maybe one so far. Uh, so um, Trial by Fire, it, tr- far. <laughs> Trial by Fire is uh, um, six for Bruce. All right, so that brings us to the top five. And it usually starts getting interesting when we get in the top five. Mm-hmm. I uh, predicted the panel would choose Radar for Love at number five. I predicted the panel would choose Radar for Love at number five as well. I thought they'd do a little better. Um, at number five, with 490 points, the panel chose Secretly Cruel. Mm. Six panelists, Kiss and Time, Jeff Rajag- R- Jeff Rajagari, Richie Rich, Juan Manuel Burgos, Mark Weir, Vincio Enrique, picked this as their favorite. I picked um, Secretly Cruel as my least favorite. Secretly Cruel, to me, um, is Gene's most meh song on this album, like... To me, he didn't even try with Secretly Cruel. Uh, and it definitely has a phoned-in feel to it. Um, to me, and like I said, I, if you love it, rock on. I totally respect that you love it. 
that's the thing I do like about Kiss is they have something for everybody. Um, but yeah, for me, Secretly Cruel, I really don't have anything to say about it other than I don't really, I don't, I don't really like it. I don't skip it. Like I said, I don't skip any song on this album. Uh, but um, there are some elements to it I like, but I can't really think of them right now. So um, yeah, Secretly Cruel, Secretly Cruel, least for me. And it's number nine for me. Um, it's it's always reminds me of where Gene would take us in Crazy Nights, that this kind of song. Um, but I totally agree with you. It's a fun song. To me, there's nothing amazing and there's nothing really bad. It's just, you know, I don't want to say bland in a negative way, but it's bland. I did have one panelist. I think it probably would have been, I can't remember who it was, but one of the people that um, probably picked it as their favorite, they said that the opening riff was yummy. And it, <laughs> when I hear that opening riff, I think Mr. Speed. That, that, yep. that, 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 I'm like, wait a minute. That's I've heard that riff before. <laughs> did Paul let you borrow that? <laughs> mm-hmm. Did you get Paul's permission, Gene? You better got Paul's permission. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, Secretly Cruel, uh, Mr. Kulik picked Secretly Cruel at eight for him. Mm. So it was down there for him as well. Um, so we are now up to number four. I said panel would choose any way you slice it. Okay. Um, my prediction for number four was uh, all night. Um, and every time I say that, you know, it's funny, you, you, the stuff that happens in your brain. Every time I say that, I see I see Paul Stanley, uh, all night. Uh, yeah, tell him to play it. Uh, all night. Uh, all night. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, my prediction was uh, all night, uh, number four. Uh, what the panelists chose at number four with 597 points is uh, all night. Uh, uh, <laughs> that, that, now that's uh, all now. night. Uh, all I thought night. Lynn was fired. Uh, all night. <laughs> yeah. Uh, eight panelists, two gay dads, Tom S., Specs, uh, Snake Hips, 3131, Bree Strutter, Sam Lewis, D- Dylan Tucker, and Bizbag, 68, picked uh, all night as their favorite song. I picked it as number six. I love uh, All Night. Um, I love these songs. The songs on this album have such great starts. Just if you think about it, most of them have very good. And that dun, 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 you hear that and you're like, okay, this this should be good. But I love I love this this song. I love the video. <laughs> I adored the video when I was 16. Uh, I can still see the nerd. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I can still see it. I, yes, yes. I have, <laughs> I have it noted. <laughs> I'm going right where you're going. Um, uh, but Paul Stanley, Paul Stanley lyric. Um, I'm like Kenshi Chris in his video where he was highlighting lyrics. Because uh, when the waiting is over, I come a running to you. I love that lyric because it's like at the end of the day, you got to have that person that you run to. You mm-hmm. got to have that person, and you and then you uh all night. You know, um, this is one of those songs. I remember when I was a kid, I just thought this was the cheesiest, cheesiest song. And don't get me wrong, it still is a pepperoni with extra, extra cheese on it. But it's good cheese, like to steal mm-hmm. one of your lines. It's good cheese, uh, and it's the it's eighties, man. I mean, like I said, you got to take these albums. You got to pull yourself out of today and go back to the context of when these albums came out. These were not the cheesiest songs being written in 1985. Mm. Uh, and with bands, you know, coming out like Poison and Warrant and stuff, these were not the cheesiest songs. Um, I, I, I love this song. And so, yeah, so I pick it at number six for me. Yeah, it's number four for me. Um, just another exposed classic. Um Watching Exposed as a as a fifteen year old kid um, was so much fun. Going and renting that from the video store, and 
the girls in the video, the riff, those their asses shaking right to that dun 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 da 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 da. Oh man, so it's like everything you want. I mean, who who amongst us did not want to be in a band after watching that video? Like, holy crap, you can do this for a living! Mm-hmm. Boom, right there. And you know, this this song is cheesy, but to me. Long looking back, it stands up better than I just wanna. Mm-hmm. To me, oh, I yeah. just wanna oh, is yeah. way more. I just wanna cringeworthy. Yeah. You know, like roll up the window. Yeah, I just wanna. It's kind of it's kind of cringeworthy. Yeah. Yeah, and and this, you know, we always talk about they need more '80s songs in the set list. Now, this song would be awesome in a set list. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think chicks would love it, guys would love it, the crowd would just love this song in the set list. That would be fun. Mm-hmm. And see Paul turn around on the stage and do his butt like the girls do uh-huh. and get, get all the girls in the audience going crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cause I, I, if I, if I am on enough people's social media that are Paul fans to know if there's anything that any woman that likes Paul, they like his butt to this day. They still like his butt. They complimented on it and talk about it a lot. Um, but yeah, this song, it's kind of cool what this happened uh, on Twitter. And I love I love being on Twitter, and I love being on my social media and interacting. Um, uh, somebody started, I can't remember who it was, I think it was Bree, um, started, we started quoting lyrics, and you have, and we did it to this song. So each person on their comment was putting in the next part of the lyric, and it just kind of went down through... And that's just so much fun when you see mm-hmm. people uh, do that. And uh, and I just love seeing people that are young, like Bree and like Emily and a lot of the younger other people on the channel that are just so passionate and so into Kiss. And it, it's their band. And they're, they like the modern stuff, but you see them digging really deep back into the 80s stuff and into the 70s stuff. That just warms my heart as an old Kiss mm-hmm. fan who I'm, I've got many years under me so I can be a little curmudgeon. I've got 43 years, almost 44 years under me as a Kiss fan. And uh, it's easy to get a little jaded, a little, you know, salty. And it's just really cool. It's like a breath of fresh air when you see really young Kiss fans um, as positive about Kiss as they are. It's really cool. Um, uh, all night, uh, Bruce picked, uh, all night at number four. So he's Hmm. apparently a big fan of this song as well. So he was right with the panel, man. He's been right with them. So that is really cool. Um, so top three, these three are going to battle it out. And I knew that these were the ones that was going to (laughs) be in the top. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, top three. What, what's your prediction for number three? Who wants to be lonely? All right. Who wants to be lonely? I predicted who wants to be lonely is number three as well. Um, at number three with, and it jumps. Okay, check this out. Remember I always talk, talk about the separation? Mm-hmm. Number four has 597 points. Number three has 754. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's like... 200 point jump so the top three are separated this is the cream uh separated um but yeah number three at 754 points the panel chose king of the mountain Mm. an upset in in my opinion (laughs) um let's see 23 panelists Sublime, Robbie Stars, Jesse Ray, Gregory Pegg, Stephen Goodman, Luis Maladino, Pins Fan 77, Jay Reed, Les Wadley, Mikhail D, Eric Mosiu, Rick Taylor, Jason Davies, Donald Rickert, Mike and Fresno, Jen Simensu, Jack Skellington, Julian Gill, Kimchi Chris, Wurz Drago, Justin Churchy, Hanson the Third, Matt Yucci, Matthew Wasson picked this as their favorite. I picked King of the Mountain as my third favorite song on this album it could just as easily be number one uh the top three for me are all number one um it's 1.1 1.2 and 1.3 
Uh, King of the Mountain is amazing, and coming from a drummer, uh, this was the first song on this album I learned how to play. And with King of the Mountain and Any Way You Slice It, uh, and then um, and then Who Wants to Be Lonely, like right at the very beginning of this album, it's like boom, boom, boom. It's like a, you know, amazing, amazing, amazing way to start an album. Worth the price of admission for me. Uh, but King of the Mountain is just an awesome, awesome song. The drums in it are great. And, uh, oh man, it's just, the solo in this is good. And one of my favorite parts is just before they go into the solo, you hear how tight they are, where they're, where they're all, the bass, the guitar, and the drums are all doing that. And they're just so tight. And then they go into that mm -hmm. blistering solo by Bruce. And then they do that breakdown where it's just like, ah. And Eric has a couple little cool feels in there. And then you just kind of build back up into it. Song has dynamics. It's a Paul Stanley construction. It was also um, written by Bruce Kulick and Desmond Child. Uh, anytime you see Bruce in on a song, um, uh, you know, it's just... And Bruce did co-write a lot of songs on this album. He co-wrote uh, King of the Mountain, uh, Trial by Fire, I'm Alive, and... That's it. But, you know, Desmond Child wrote a lot on this too. Him and Paul wrote a lot of songs together. But, yeah, King of the Mountain is, is number three for me. It's uh, number six for me. But, again, that's not reflective of, like, not liking it. It's a great opener. Um, the drums are fantastic. I love the uh, pre-chorus riff. And now that you mention it, that little breakdown before the solo is almost unlike kiss at the time it's almost like rush territory like those like kind of like time changes like that um very very cool this song makes me wish we would have gotten an eric Carr drum solo drum track on a on an 80s record pre revenge of course um like how cool would a an eric Carr drum jam be on this record I think that that's a missed opportunity because he was one of those great 80s drummers. You know, you just you, you think Eric Carr and you picture those double bass drums and that huge kit. Um, I think that was a missed opportunity for this era. But um, like you said, great opening track. And if you're a drummer, I imagine this would be so much fun to listen to and learn and just, you know, Sit with your behind your kit with a ghetto blaster. Stop, rewind, stop, mm -hmm. rewind. That'd be and those, those were the good days. Yeah, and I think I think the influence of having Eric in the band and him having a few albums under his belt, being more confident in the studio, and so. But I think the way they were able to have that syncopated thing we were talking about going into the chorus was because they had. Two members. They had Eric Carr and they had Bruce Kulick. And I think it was those two guys. I would not be surprised. I would like to know about how that came about because it only happens in that one part of the song. And it never really happens anywhere else on the album. And I'd like to know where that initially came from because it is kind of weird. Sticks out like a sore thumb. But it's delicious. It's it's mm -hmm. great. It's one of the things that makes King of the Mountain so good. So, um... <clears throat> That brings us to number two. So if you've been playing along and been writing down your list as we go, you're going to know who the number one is after we pick this. Uh, also, um, before I get too far, King of the Mountain, Bruce picked that as his number three. So mm. he's been right with the panel. Uh, so Bruce picked King of the Mountain number three for him. Uh, uh, <clears throat> panel, I chose King of the Mountain as number two. I predicted King of the Mountain for two. I thought it was going to be right up there at the top. I didn't think it was going to take the top, but I thought it was going to be right there. The panel at number two with 774 points picked Who Wants to Be Lonely as number two. 18 panelists, 3SV 1333, Ed Guy, GZ, Paul Bertolino, New York Groove, Jeremy Elliott, R Ford Podcast, Andrew Gattensby, Julian Davies, Tony Rod, Deuce, Paul Teplius, Steve, R.C. Campbell, Bill Sharp, Mark Hilliard, Jake Jackson, Aladio, uh, picked it as 
They're number one. I picked this as number four for me. And like I said, it could just as well be number one. Uh, I love Who Wants to Be Lonely. Like I said, it's, it's the third track on the album. And I love, like I said, this album, the songs have such great beginnings. And I love that. I love that. And then when Paul starts singing where they do the... Um, I love the lyrics to this song. This is a Paul Stanley construction. This is the type of song that I think Paul Stanley builds the best. Is a song like Who Wants to Be Lonely. Um, it's right up his alley. It's that song that I was telling you about. We mentioned on one of the previous panels where everybody thinks that Gene during this time of the 80s was doing the fuck me, suck me type songs. And Paul was doing the, I want to be your boyfriend. I understand you. I get mm -hmm. you. I've been there. That whole line, open yourself to me. Let me show you what it can be like. That is a beautiful lyric. And the chicks were eating it up at the time. And it shows because who wants to be lonely being number two, not only among women, but among men as well. Um, it's a good song. You can't deny it. You can't deny mm -hmm. it's a great song. So it's number four for me. Um, it's my number one. This, uh, this video was everything to me <laughs> when I was young. Um, made me love Paul as a front man, as a songwriter. The, uh, the hook in that kind of pre-chorus line is so good. Wake up and, in uh, the middle of the night. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So good. And, uh, like, I, I see his fluorescent yellow coat from this video, and my heart melts. It almost turns me into, like, if I ever saw the Phantom of the Park robes, you know. Those two things are just so near and dear to my heart uh i love this track this is a volume up to 10 and uh such a good song my my all-time favorite track from this record so much fun and it's held up so well even though it wasn't really considered a hit um you know it's funny because they actually released like three videos from this album but mm -hmm. they only released one single they only released mm -hmm. tears are falling as a single but they released three videos and the songs that they released videos for, all three of them are Windows Down songs. Even to this day, mm. you can go down the road. I, a matter of fact, was going down the road the other day, stopped at a red light. It's been warm here. It's been in the mid-80s and was jamming uh, Who Wants to Be Lonely was on. Mm. And Windows Down, I looked over. There was a car beside me, Windows Down too. They looked over at me and nodded. You know, and so I know they heard what I was playing. So, because I had it up, <laughs> uh, you know, my 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 mini may be little, but the sound system in it is big. Right. So, um, so yeah, so I, uh, this is a Windows Down song. This is not one you're embarrassed of, even to no, this day. Uh... All right, and let's see, Mr. Kulik picked "Who Wants to Be Lonely" as his number two, his second mm. favorite song. Right with the panel, man. He's been right. He's been right with it. Drop my papers here. All right. So that if by process of elimination, you know what's first, what's number one, but we're gonna give our predictions anyway. What's your prediction? What did you think was gonna be number one? Tears are falling. Yep, mine too. Oh no, tears are falling. And at number one, with eight hundred and fourteen votes, eight hundred and fourteen points is Tears Are Falling. 30 panelists. 30. Perpetual Art, Dave Zwan, Jeremy Kimona, Destroyer Dave, Rick R., Jay Lee, Demetrius K., Joel Pegg, Kiss Carolina, Hard Rock Metalhead, Wam SB, Indy Colt 777, That Toy Bonnie Guy, Ashley Dalton, Emily Graziano, Walter Bianco, Charlie Shepard, Ace Van Deuce, Matthew Smith, Jeff Wyatt, Kim Ander, Kim Andrews, Katie Christina, Kiss Man, Darren Helliwell, Vincent Marone Author, David King, Sean McGalliard, Tony P, Skate Devil 74, Tom Dust. And um, I picked Tears Are Falling as my fifth. And 
it could just be number one, but out of all the good songs, out of all the good Paul songs on this album, Tears Are Falling is, um, I don't not like it, but it's it's a little fatigue, maybe. Mm. Um, but but when I hear it, I still, I love it. I mean, those line, that line, I read your mind like an open book. I mean, those lyrics are amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, you turn to me with a different look and then it's raining. It's just, and the video, I love the video for this. And this is probably my favorite Bruce Kulick solo on the album. And I love, I can still see him in this video with the rain beating down on him. And during that little part in the video where he does like this and he does his hand around like that and then back around like that. Did he have the swirl guitar in this video? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I mean, I can't see, I know he was, that was a real popular uh, guitar for him at the time. And uh, I think he's been actually recreating that and and, mm-hmm. and uh, giving, I guess he's selling them. Um but I still, I just love the slow motion of the beginning of it, the rain beating down on him and him flipping his hand around uh, whenever he's doing that part. This is one of my favorite uh, solos on the album. And uh, I love Tears Are Falling. Like I said, it's down at five, but that is not a reflection of anything at all. It's not a mm-hmm. middle of, it's not a middle of the road song for me. It's just, you can't make them all number one. Yeah, it's, it's right up there with everything else. So, what about you? Um, it's my number two. Uh, I love the song. I can't really say anything more about loving it. It's just got a great hook. To me, this is the song that would bring '80s Kiss to the forefront again. If you put this song in Stranger Things season four, and just timed it perfectly right, like a good scene of you know, like a guy and a girl, and you put in this song, thousands of teenage girls everywhere would download this song and, you know, oh, who's this band Kiss? And they may not even, you know, go back and research the makeup era. I think the 80s era of this band would come out, and this will be the song that saves non-makeup Kiss. Mm -hmm. And I I predict it's going to happen somewhere, this song is going to end up in a movie or like a Stranger Things or like a Tiger King, since that's the hot thing right now. Um, <laughs> this song is going to end up in something and it's going to open up a whole generation to at least that's what I, I really want to see happen. Because even when you were singing that opening line, I smiled because uh, I just love it. It's got such a great hook. Puts me in a good mood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really does. And yeah, I definitely could see this song. And and the the non makeup era is a especially around this time is a very under appreciated area uh era and it does need to be rekindled and brought back to the surface because even kids themselves uh do don't they don't they don't really tip their hat mm-hmm. to this era enough, especially this lineup, the Eric Carr, Bruce Killick lineup. And mm-hmm. uh yeah, a song being being a song uh during a monologue during during a uh, a scene between a guy and a girl or predominantly being played on, on the jukebox in an arcade or something mm-hmm. something that yep. you know at the mall or something where it's predominantly not too far in the background where it's predominantly played yeah that's something if I was management for kiss or public relations for kiss that'd be definitely something I'd be trying to push out into something that was uh, 80s related like mm-hmm. like you were talking about um, yeah so Bruce picked <clears throat> Tears Are Falling as his number one pick so I want to just kind of go over this kind of show you how on cue Bruce was with the panel so the panel picked Tears Are Falling number one so did Bruce the panel picked Who Wants to Be Lonely is number two so did Bruce panel picked King of the Mountain, number three, so did Bruce. The panel picked four uh, for four uh, all night, so did Bruce. Um, they picked five wrong. Secretly Cruel uh, is what the panel picked. Uh, Bruce picked Radar for Love. Uh, six, they picked Trial by Fire. He picked Trial by Fire. Seven, they picked Any Way You Slice It. He picked Any Way You Slice It. Eight, they picked Radar for Love. He picked Secretly Cruel. 
Nine, they picked I'm Alive. He picked I'm Alive. Eight, they picked Love's a Deadly Weapon. He picked Love's a Deadly Weapon. So only huh. off on two songs. Got two That's wild. transposed. That's amazing how close he was to what us collectively as a hundred other people picked. That's amazing. Uh-huh. So hats off to you, Bruce. Yes. I mean, it's, it's almost, that's amazing. Um, so, uh, I, I really enjoyed this and it, it kind of makes me very, uh, excited for the, the following albums that comes with the next two albums that come with this lineup. Uh, with with crazy nights because I've already had to some people say I'm already working on my crazy nights list so there's people that are already ready for crazy nights uh, and um, even though I will admit that after asylum I kind of checked out with kiss it wasn't that I wasn't still a kiss fan I still listen to kiss on a daily basis I was just listening to I kind of stepped back into their older catalog um, with with uh, after asylum so I wasn't really on board for the next two albums. I didn't come back uh, until Revenge. I actually didn't own Crazy Nights and, and Hot in the Shade until recently, with like within the last two years. And but I got Revenge when it came out. Um, well, and and Crazy Nights, the 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 Sunset Strip era blew up. Mm-hmm. So there was a lot of other choices at the time, and a lot of other, you know, I mean, you. Record stores were huge still, and I mean, you had choices everywhere. So, yeah, it was hard to, you know, always just grab your Kiss record and hold it up high. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, it's going to be interesting. Um, I'm really going to have to listen to Crazy Nights. Uh, that'll be starting um, today, or to probably start tomorrow on my way into work, and I'll listen to it at work. Uh, I'm an essential employee, so I still have to go to work. And um, so... Um, I'll be listening to it, and I'm going to try to really give a fair shake at it, as well as Hot in the Shade. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see what I myself am going to end up picking. So, um, but yeah, so if you're watching this video right now, uh, the, the panel is up for you to put your choice in, to put your list in for Crazy Nights and, uh, Get that in uh, so we can uh, have you as part of the panel. And so, um, Rick, any closing thoughts for you? No, uh, thank you for letting me participate in this. And it, I just, it just dawned on me that you mentioned this cover looking like Dynasty. Mm-hmm. And I've always, you know, focused in on the the lipstick solo colors. But it's neat that you say the Dynasty kind of layout because dynasty was to be called asylum for a while and so i mean that's kind of neat i never just until right now it never dawned on me that i mean maybe maybe they did you know want to name this asylum and thought boom the four faces like dynasty Mm and that'd be another bruce thing that would be neat to hear yeah i actually don't have a big issue with this cover i mean a lot of people do um i I think it's just, it's a sign of what was going on. I mean, you yeah. know, it's a sign of what was going on. It was a sign of what everybody else was doing. And, and I, uh, I believe I read somewhere that Paul really liked the Motels album cover. Mm-hmm. And that's what he kind of kind of molded it after. Yeah. Yeah. And I think he, it didn't come off exactly the way he wanted. Uh, if, if, that, if that's part of that story too. But I don't have a problem with this. Uh, I don't have a problem with this cover or the, or the packaging. Or, you know, the back cover, I think, is pretty cool. Um, so, yeah. So it's uh, it's not bad. All right. Well, that's all I've got for today, panel members. And Mr. Bruce Killick, if you're still watching, thank you so much for submitting your mm-hmm. panel list. And I hope Very to cool. I hope to see you on Twitter uh, posting more panel lists for the upcoming albums that you're involved in. It'd be really cool. It'd be really cool to get you into a panel video uh, to talk with us in real time about what you picked, or at the very least, uh, get you to make Twitter response videos. I know that Twitter, you kind of have to do real short videos. Um, So that's why I'm thinking, 
give it a thought if you're watching about being right over here beside us and giving your thoughts on it. Anyway, mm. that's all I've got for today. But how cool would that be? That's all I've Very got for cool. today. Rick, thank you so much, man, for thank you always taking time. I always have such a great time. And thank you guys for watching, subscribing. Subscribe to Rick and and hit the bell notification. Subscribe to me. Hit the bell notification. Click the thumbs up. That helps us get in the YouTube algorithm. And Rick needs some subscribers. He's got good subscribers, but let's pump his numbers up. Let's <laughs> get him up there. He's perfectly happy. That's not coming from him. He's perfectly happy. But I just want to see his channel share it out to more people because it really is totally worth it. And uh, it really is. If you've not seen his channel before, go over there after this video and check out. I usually put <laughs> I usually put a quick link right at the end of the video where you can, if he's in a video with me, I put a link there to subscribe, to be able to subscribe to his as well uh, because I love the guy and I want to help him out as much as I can. Thank so, um, yeah, give us a thumbs up. Interact down in those comments. Tell us what you think. And, uh, you know, put, put your input in down there on what the results are. And go over and start your list for Crazy Nights. We will see you in the next video. Take it easy. Hey, guys, it's Brant. And I'm back with another The Panel Has Spoken video. And this time... We're going to be tackling Kiss's Animalize album. And I've got Sorry. a good... Oh, you said animal. <laughs> you keep me straight, man. They both start with A, damn it. <laughs> there's, your, there's your buffer for the end. Yeah, there's my buffer for the end. <laughs>